Hi guys, in this video I want to talk very briefly about the chi-square table. This is one amongst many of these tables and I just very, very quickly want to show you how to use this table to come to the, a conclusion in your hypothesis test, whether you're doing a chi-square test of independence or a chi-square test of homogeneity. Now I don't want to go off and talk about those tests. I have plenty of tutorials where I show you uh, full-fledged examples of these tests. I want to just focus on the table. So if you recall, you uh, at the very last step of your hypothesis test, you have to come to a conclusion. And in order to come to a conclusion uh, without software, basically, if you're sitting in a classroom, you have a table. So in this case, the appropriate table is a chi-square table. So this is the Greek letter chi. Square, chi-square. Okay. So first, you need to determine what your degrees of freedom are. Right? Now, depending on the type of test you're doing, that can mean different things. For the two tests, the most common test, it's the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. And that's how you determine your degrees of freedom. By the way, the rows and columns of your contingency table. So here I have two rows, three columns, so my degrees of freedom would be 1 times 2. So that would be 2 degrees of freedom, and I'd be here. Okay. Next thing you need to determine is what level of significance you're doing the test at. This table, it's a pretty condensed table. It just has two choices. Alpha, 0.05, and 0.01. That's what these represent. Once you've determined these two things, the degrees of freedom and the level of significance of your test, you go to the correct row and the correct column, and you get your cutoff value. So let's say alpha was 0.05 for our uh, made-up example. And let's say it was we had two degrees of freedom. So 5.99 is our cutoff. Now the chi-squared distribution is, an, is another example of a right-tailed distribution. Sorry, a right-skewed distribution, which whose values are non-negative, meaning the lowest value you can have is zero. So this is chi-square, and let's be specific with two degrees of freedom. So the chi-square distribution, just a quick kind of uh, background, is a whole family of distributions. A particular member of the chi-square family is uh, specified by knowing what its degrees of freedom are. So degrees of freedom is its parameter. It's got one parameter. Okay, so for us, we have we had two degrees of freedom, so we're dealing with this particular member of the chi-square family. And what this value is, is the value such, so 5.99, such that this percent of chi-square values are greater than this. So this is 0 0.005, so this would have to be 0.95, sorry, 0 0.05. So this is 0 0.95 because they need to sum up to 1. So how is this useful? Well, in a hypothesis test, you take your chi-square test statistic, you know that tedious number that you need to calculate where you compare the observed cell counts to the expected cell counts one by one, and then sum all that up in this formula, you get your chi-square test statistic. If your chi-square test statistic is greater than this cutoff, in this case 5.99, you reject HO. If it's less than the cutoff, well, you would be here and you would fail to reject HO. So essentially, these values here give you the cutoffs which determine the rejection region. So this right here that I shaded in, you can call the rejection region. 
those tests that I talked about earlier, the chi-square test of independence and the chi-square test of homogeneity, both are one-tailed tests. Both are right-tailed tests. So you're going to get a rejection region that looks identical to the picture that I've drawn here. But depending on what degrees of freedom you have and what your alpha level is, your value would may be different than mine. I chose 5.99 for our made-up example, but yours might be some some other value. Okay, so be careful with that what that value is. Compare your test statistic to that value. If your test statistic is greater than that value, you will reject the null hypothesis in that particular test. If your value is less, if your test statistic is less than this value from the table, you will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and just to let you kind of see there are more than uh, what meets the eye here. The degrees of freedom go on and on and on. Okay? So I hope this was helpful and condensed. Uh, Till next time, subscribe, like, share, and have a great day.